All right. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the Systems of Wealth podcast. I am your host, No Cromfly. And today I'm joined by a very special guest, someone who has had a massive impact on me, my life, my business. I am a user of his products on an everyday basis. Um, it's really an honor to have him on today. It is the great Jason Perkins. Jason, thank you so much for joining me today, my friend. Dude, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for thinking of me to put you on your amazing podcast and your platform. And you know, again, just sharing each other's voice and genius with each other. I'm I'm very grateful to be here. So thanks for having me. Absolutely. Yeah, man. That's what it's all about. And really from the jump, I, I did just want to take the time to say thank you. I mean, like I said, um, Bonzo and you guys have had a massive impact on me and my business. It's like re-energized my love for like getting to like show up and do work every single day. And just like that platform alone has changed like the clients that I get to interact with, my own like learning of in improving myself as a marketer and digital marketer. And so seriously, just from the jump, wanted to say thank you. Well, what people don't know is that you are a bonzo ninja. So <laughs> there are there are very there are very few like hundred percent stakeholders of usage of the platform. And because there's a lot and you are yeah. one of the few that can leverage everything inside the platform, think critically through the platform. And that's why, you know, our members of the platform love your influence uh, on how you build and customize and they keep coming back to you. So really thank you, man. I mean, this, <laughs> is, a, this is a thank you podcast now, but seriously, they, they love you and they love, they love your brain and, and how you critically think through strategy through our platform. So it's, it's awesome to have you part of the family. I really appreciate it. And like, it's, it's fun for me. Cause like, it's been a natural progression of like how I've almost stacked skills over the years. Like first, the very first thing I ever learned, and I've talked about this before was like paid ads and running paid ads online. And like, when I found the Facebook ads manager, I was like, this was built for me. And then yeah. the logical sort of step was like, okay, someone clicks on an ad and they go to a landing page and there's a conversion event. Right. And then mm -hmm. when you're converting or you're capturing that data, they're going to now a CRM, like a back end follow up system. And like, when I found bonds, I was like, this is built for me. Like this was it, like this was exactly what it was. And so putting that together now, like gives me, it puts me in a position to almost like sell that as a system of like, okay, I yeah. can help drive traffic. We converting, we're following up. And like, that is a very dialed in process. And so, yeah, man, like it's been super fun. And, and again, yeah, I'm, I, I couldn't be to be like the Bonzo Ninja, like it's such an honor for me. It really is. <laughs> well, we're, we're super excited to push clients your way to optimize the platform. So it's, it's really cool. Yeah, you do man. a great job. I appreciate it. And I want to get into, I mean, we'll definitely go deep into Bonzo and talk about Bonzo and, and what you guys are accomplishing right now, because it is a super powerful tool. But I want to set the stage a little bit and just go back a little bit like into your background and kind of how you like what your journey has been like, you know, to now being the president of Bonzo essentially. But like the the way that I like to start all these podcasts is like when people when people ask you what you do, like how do you articulate that? Like what is your response when someone's like, Yeah, Jason, like what do you what do you do for work? Yeah. Uh I typically say I'm a problem solver. Um, dude, you know, nice. Yeah. I love yeah. that. Yeah, Great. you know, because you know, when we're solving problems, we 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 give her we there's value in that, right? Right. right. And so when you look at I think there's you know, when I was younger, I think I think everyone that can relate to this that's in their 30s, 40s, 50s, I'm 38. Uh, when I was younger, I felt like uh, pro, like if I were if I were to run into friction in life, business, job, family, whatever the case may be, that was like a that was a, an immediate uh, like I, I would fall down, I'd yeah. fall down hard, right? Yeah. Like mentally, physically, like it would just be a block for me, and you know, as we put ourselves more in those situations where we're constantly problem solving and that's the norm, it's not gravy train, it's problem solving. And mm -hmm. we're looking at friction points and how we can make that better in any aspect of your business. That's what makes us grow. Like that's mm -hmm. where growth lives. That's where yep. it breeds. And if we're able to sustain that and live in that moment and live in and, and accept problem solving, accept friction, in our business, in our life, we're valued, right? There's a right. manifestation of what happens there and we're valued more. So, you know, when I look at what I love doing now, I've had to force myself into thinking like, I love being a problem solver. Yes. I love friction. I love right. pain points because if you live in that moment, same thing like 
you know, when you look at some big endurance athlete, right? Like they're all they're doing is they're putting himself through misery for, you know, four or five Ironmen, like 14 mm. hours at a time. Right. But they lit, they learn to live in those moments. They learn to, to like accept that and want more of it because that's where they're the most comfortable. And when you can get to that point where you're comfortable in those friction points and those pain points and, you know, that suffering type mentality, you know, you come to accept it and your yeah. value begins to increase. Wow. That's great. Like you're, it's almost like you're tricking yourself into embracing that and loving it and, and recognizing like when that feeling comes up of like, I'm hitting kind of that resistance. Yeah. That is where that change and that growth is going to come from. Like my, one of my sayings is like the, that feeling never goes away. You just get better at dealing with it essentially, like of feeling that pain and the quicker you can embrace it and then look for the solution within that. I mean, that's essentially what I'm doing every day for the clients that come to me, especially like for the bonds and stuff is like, I have this problem and I don't know how to solve it. It's like, great, bring me your problems. And that's where my value yeah. lies is like, I want to solve that stuff for you. So that's yeah. really cool. Cause I, like, I think it's interesting when like entrepreneurs and business owners, especially like, like that question of like, what do you do? It's like, I don't know how to always answer. Cause I usually my like quick and dirty is like, I'm a consultant. People are like, what do you consult? Yeah. Like, what do you need? Like, what <laughs> I can solve problems. <laughs> like that's, that's what I'm here to do. And so, yeah, it's, it's interesting to, cause like, that's always like the elevator pitch. What do you do? Summarize it. But it's always like, I don't know, I'm Noah and I'm just living. And like, what I want to do every day is like what I get to do. So it's always hard to like answer that sometimes. So it's always interesting you know, to ask people. That's it. And I think for any young entrepreneur listening to this podcast, it's, if you can, if you can bring value to people's pain points, you or you're gonna you're gonna find solution to people's yeah. pain points. Your value skyrockets, right? Yeah. Because nobody in their business likes friction. They right. want everything to like. They want operational excellence. They yes. want smooth operation. So if you're able to provide that, right, and come to um come to the table with with answers, right? Like I always say, people are looking for answers. Business owners, mm -hmm. like whatever the case may be, loan officers people in the mortgage field, real estate, whatever, they're looking for answers. So if you, mm -hmm. if you can come to them with answers for their friction points, your your value just skyrockets. Yes, 100%, right? totally. Yeah, it's interesting, right? Like the, the value that's found in that and being like wanting to, like being obsessed almost with it of like, I am that person and I can solve these problems. And like, it's always interesting to, to learn about that. A lot of businesses are creator of like, I have a problem for myself. You solve it. And you're like, oh, I'm sure a lot of other people have this problem as well. And yeah. that's what creates a business. Like that's really like the, the truth, the fundamental behind a lot of that is essentially just solving a problem. So that's really cool. Yeah. It's, it's a snowball effect too. Like to that yes, point, you know, totally. you, you're, you're solving similar problems in a specific vertical then yes. that just snowballs. Right. So, right. and that's why, you know, I see these young entrepreneurs and they're mm. trying to work in many different verticals and, and, you know, provide all these different services where right. you don't need to be everywhere and everything. If you can get granular and niche on a problem and solve that problem really, really well, you are going to explode. Like that's, that, <laughs> yes. I wish I knew that when I was younger. Totally, like, I'm right? just gonna I'm gonna focus in on a niche vertical with yep. one specific problem and perfect right. solving that problem. And I everyone's gonna hire me. I'm gonna right. have I'm gonna have jobs for the for the rest of my career. Like 100%. I'm good. Right. Yep. And you can and then you charge more because your your brand starts to build that personal yes. brand, your excellence starts to build. You create co educational content around right. the problems that you're solving in that specific vertical. It's not 100%. rocket science. It's just no. hard for like, but again, like I didn't know that. I wish no. I knew that in my right. early twenties. That would have been amazing. Right? Yeah, right. But, it's it's like know? an immaturity thing almost of just like I'm I want I'm I am so good that I can solve and do all these different things. And like I'm the guy that can do all these different things. And then yeah. It's almost like giving yourself permission to like just focus on this thing. Cause to your point, like as I've done more build outs for Bonzo accounts, like the reps that that's given me has completely like exponentially grown more and more. Where like now when I talk to somebody, it's like, well, I've seen how a dozen people have solved this problem specifically in their business. And that mm -hmm. gives me just more learning and puts a little bit more in my tool belt. And so as I do this, like that puts me better and better. So like, yeah, my value continues to grow. But like, if I was going to like, yeah, I'm going to do Bonzo and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And I'm going to do all these different things. Then like, you're kind of a master of none at that point. Master of none. And it comes down to the product, like for Bonzo, I don't really like move the needle in this, in this conversation, yeah, yeah, but yeah. even on the product side, like, you know, we get that question all the time. It's like, well, why don't you add this to it or that mm -hmm. to it and do this? It's like, because if you're everything, you're doing 10% yes. of 
efficiency. You right. can't be a hundred percent on everything. Like we go all in on conversational CRM. That's, yeah. that's our bread and butter. And that's where right. focus is always going to be. If you want, you know, um, you know, your own Calendly, what, whatever the case may be, like yeah. go, like go, that's why we have APIs. That's why yeah. we have web books. Like yes. if you want that other stuff built in, like we, we build our endpoints out really well so you can plug into the system, but we're never going to build that stuff out because once no. you start spreading and it's the same thing with consultants and careers, mm-hmm. like once you start spreading, you're way too thin and your, right. and your, your level of, of, of excellence decreases. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And that's, the other thing too, is that, you know, with, with younger entrepreneurs or just people finding new careers, a lot of times, you know, we feel like, well, I don't want to go all in on this thing because I don't want to do it for the rest of my life. But you don't have to. Like, right. if you look at, like, when you are obsessed with something, you can become an expert in six months. Yep. Like, if you become all in obsessed with something because of, of, you know, information overload of the internet, you can literally become an expert in something in six months. If you just devote right. all of your time and attention to that yes. thing, you'll become an expert. So that that thought or theory where I have to go like, well, I'm afraid to go all in, like right. dive head first into this thing because what if I don't like it? Well, cool. Dive in all the way. Yeah. But you don't know if you're not going to like it or not. Right. You got one foot in the water. Right? Yes. hundred percent. Yes. That's so Because like one of the big learning lessons that came out of like 2020 pandemic times, COVID, like it you know, obviously it threw a lot of people for a loop, but it put me in a position where I had some time to do some self inventory and self-reflection. And I realized that one of my big things is that I try to solve problems before they exist. And that's Mm. essentially what that is, is like you are trying to solve the problem that doesn't exist yet. Right now it should be figuring out like what it is that you want to do and what you're good at essentially. And then so like, but you can only do that really by trying. And what I always like to tell myself too, is like the, your, what you're doing right now and what like exists at this level is like preparing you for an opportunity that may not even exist yet with people that you haven't met yet for an idea that like you haven't even thought of yet. But yeah. like doing the reps now and putting it in now is preparing yourself for those things. And it's like, it's, I think that I learned it um, sort of naturally, like through just like athletics, like a baseball background of just like when you're practicing and nobody's watching, like that's when champions are sort of made, right? 100%. Like it's, it's the practice, it's the reps, it's what you're doing. When, and if you're cheating on that, when, even like when you're, maybe you're on the bench, right? But like your coach calls you to go in and like, you've been practicing, you get the big hit, then like all of a sudden you're a starter and your life changes. So like yep. it's, it's that same sort of mentality and that same idea. It's the, yeah, it's, it's the reps. That's exactly it. Um, you know, I, I look at, uh, again, like just going back to, to your point of those, you, your, your, uh, your movement in life happens, happens behind closed doors. Like mm-hmm. your ability to scale happens behind closed doors. Your yeah. ability to get better is not in front of people. It's right. not in front of your clients. It's the right. reps that you put in and like your baseball analogy is spot on, right? It's like you're practicing late, early, all day, obsessive, like thinking, how can I get better thinking through strategy? And you've got to be obsessed about those things when no one is watching to be excellent when the eyes are on you. It's the same thing in business. It's the same thing in life. It's the same thing in career. Uh, You just got to put in those reps, man. That's it. That's That's really it. So what, like, where did your, let's say entrepreneurial spirit come from? Like, was it always like you wanted to be a business owner? Like what was, what was things like when you were younger, like, what did you want to be when you were growing up? Like, what did that, where did that start for you? You know, I think that, um, everybody's journey is different on where they get to their end goal. I've always had, um, ever since a young age, I've always had anxiety around, um, self-fulfillment on mm-hmm. what I'm doing, right? Yeah. Whether it be yeah. in a career or experiences mm-hmm. in life. And the one thing I, I realized this at a very early age, because I was not your traditional route. Like I did not like going to school in high school. Yeah, I okay. was, you know, I barely graduated high school. I went to college for a year and was like, why am I doing this? I'm only going to college because people like society tells me to go to college. Yes, right. Right. And this is like, when, you know, I, I was always asking questions like, why am I going to college learning from somebody who mm. is not doing the field, right? They're yes. teaching the field. Right. So it's the same thing. If I read a book about swimming and I jump in the water, I'm not going to be able to swim. <laughs> right? But if I go and push, put myself in the water, 
that I'm going to force myself to figure it out. Yes. And that mentality of, of learning of, of diving in. And again, it was against the grain. Everyone's like, dude, you got to like go to school. I'm like, for what? Like Why? there's opportunities out there. Right. So I had anxiety around sitting and learning from somebody who was not swimming. Interesting. So I took an approach of like what opportunities I, at a young age, I really loved media. I loved okay. um, the idea of creating something and visualization and, you know, the whole marketing element of it and psychology of it. And so, you know, at an early age, I, you know, I really wanted to get into media. I wrote to a radio station to see if they had any jobs of a morning show. They called me up. They said, yeah, we've got a street boy job. You want to be a street, our, our, our street boy? <laughs> Back in the day, those, those that are younger... And people used to listen to radio morning shows <laughs> <laughs> on radio, on morning radio shows. It was, they had, you know, typically they had this like, you know, on the street personality and they would go do funky stuff. And that was me. I was this guy that wow, did the right. Midwest morning show. And again, I got that job because I asked yeah. and I got that job because, you know, again, it's not like, you know, um, like, I know, and there's all those books around like, you know, self-talk and if you can talk yourself into it. No, it's just taking action. Like yeah, go find it. opportunity and ask questions. The worst yes. thing they're going to say is no. And I figured that out at, your, at an early age. Like I'm going to just go ask people and if I can get that job and they're going to give me a chance, I'm going to go all in and do my best. Yeah, I, I did it. that. Yeah. And so, you know, did that. I got into uh, television after that, um, worked for a, a, a big uh, uh, network and interviewed, you know, all types of personalities like Tyra Banks and 90210 characters and wow. travel around. And then I was like, you know what? Um, I want to go travel overseas. Right. And okay. so I, you know, again, asked around what jobs are overseas. What can I do? Found a job, lived in the Middle East, lived in Eastern Europe. Man. Worked with, and again, it's not like, it's not the fake it till you make it, but it's the confidence level. That's all mm. it really, like if you're able to go into a, a conversation and be confident in your ability um, and act normal, like, right. It's just about how we present ourselves for opportunity that goes a long way. And yep. it really comes down to just the ask. If you can ask for an opportunity, you're going to eventually you're going to get that opportunity. A lot of people are afraid of that ask and they follow the rules all the way in their entire career. And they wake up one day and they're five years from retirement. And they said, man, my life was easy. I don't want that. I want no, right. my life was like a, an adventure. Like yes. that's what I want, right? Yes. I think that's what a lot of people want. I think that adventure starts with an ask. So wow. I have had a very unconventional route. But, you know, again, just the, even starting Bonzo, Noah, like I knew, so I was a loan officer and I okay. knew that I, I wanted to be 100% commissioned because I want to be con in control of my money. Of course. Um, so after I moved back from overseas, you know, I'm like, you know, what can I, this is, this is kind of cool. What is this real estate game? What's this mortgage loan officer thing? And so I got my loan officer license. I was 100% commission. I dove in because it's the only way I'm going to make, I'm going to be uh, successful right. is to put yourself in the doghouse. And that's what I did. Huh. Uh, but I, once I got into the industry, I realized the technology in the industry sucked. <laughs> it was terrible. Like, Say it again. Especially with, <laughs> it's such a <laughs> market. Yeah. Like yeah. all the things a loan officer has to do, um, you know, sell themselves, build relationships, convert, blah, blah, blah. Like there was not, there was not a tool out there that existed as a loan officer for me to be able to do that. And again, it's self-belief. It's like, all right, I'm not a developer. I can build this. I know what this is going to look like at the end of the day. Yes. And so my co-founder, Miles Miller and I, we, we, um, put an MVP together. We hired some developers offshore. We, okay. we built a wireframe for it. And yep. That was the birth of Bonzo. We didn't expect it to get as much momentum as it has today, but you know that's why we experiment and we test with things, right? We 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 play with ideas. We put, we put those ideas into motion. We see what kind of traction we're going to get. Obviously, we did our blue ocean strategy to see what competitors in the market. But then you look at weaknesses in verticals, right? Like I look at like I, I talk to so many entrepreneurs and they're like, I have this giant idea. I'm like, okay, that's awesome. But what mm. niche ideas do you have? Because right. your niche idea is going to make you a lot of money and your big idea is mm. to like 0.001% chance. Like it could, right. but you have a much better opportunity of creating <laughs> a niche product that's going to explode because <clears throat> if you have assets uh, of value that you can bring, like marketing, like being confident, being able to leverage the digital landscape of social media, like all these things, like take your strengths together find a vertical that's niche enough and hmm. go all in with it. I was having a conversation with um, wow. a gentleman the other day. He's um, senior vice president of a very large bank and young guy. And he's like, listen, I just, 
you know, they pay me a lot of money. I'm doing fine, but I want to do something else. I'm like, well, what do you want to do? He's like, I just want to do something on my own. I said, good. Like, look at every opportunity that's in front of you. Look at the reflectors and on the street. Like, can you make those reflectors better? Mm. Probably. There's probably there, there's probably an opportunity there, right? Like, so it's like, look at what exists today. There's so many opportunities out there that are just sitting to be taken yes. because someone has that flagship of of um you know product but it's not a great product it's just there because nothing else exists there is hmm. disruption to be had in everything and if you can get nuance in your thought you're going to find disruption everywhere you look wow dude i love that there's so much that you said that like i i want to harp on like it's funny because my like how i found basically like my marketing career was the same sort of deal like i came i went to the university of oregon i came back and was learning marketing and like didn't want to, just didn't feel like going to school to learn Facebook ads and digital marketing, like made sense because yeah. it was so new and they weren't teaching that in school. Right. So I bought a course. I taught myself. The first person that I reached out to was on the board of a nonprofit and just offered to work for free to get some experience. And who was that? It was Scott Shea. That's how you and <laughs> that's I know awesome. each other. So like yeah, I got that's super- That's how you guys know each other. Dude, that's it sweet. Was, I was 19. I was just reaching out to people and asking, same sort of thing. I was just asking to like be able to do stuff and met Scott and- like the rest is sort of history from that point. Like that one relationship has opened the doors to so much. And yeah. going back to like you, like the creation of Bonzo came from like you having your own problem, like as a loan officer and being like, this is what 100%. I'm doing. And you're like, I need to solve my own problem for myself. So, and I want to talk about, like, I'm super curious. There's, I want to talk about like specifically what you guys are solving for, like with Bonzo specifically. But before we totally go into it, like, I'm just curious around like, developing and launching like an actual SaaS product or a SaaS business. That's what I was going to ask you about was like, yeah. what, what, what's like the sequence or like the launch of the creation? Is it like, okay, you know, obviously we need a product to sell. So we need something mm -hmm. to develop, but like we need funding or some capital to be able to build a product. And then like, and then we need to be able to acquire clients. Like what did that process go and sort of look like for you guys? Yeah. You know, I, I think, again, a lot of times people want to build this giant thing, right? Yeah. And, I, you know, to me, I, the approach needs to be small. That's where the, you know, the MVP product comes into play, right? It's like, right. is there market fit? But yes. you'll like, to me, it started with asking questions, you know, to people in the industry, okay. would this help your business? But I think, you know, stepping one step back there, it's also, knowing an industry, right? Like mm -hmm. if you're, if you're in whatever industry you're in, you know, it's about understanding those pain points. If you don't understand those pain points, go to the source, the people in the, in the industry right. and ask questions, get some feedback, uh, understand their pain points, what they're looking for. Does the technology exist? If it does, why don't you use it? Is it the price? Is it because it doesn't, whatever the case may be, but yeah. just be as granular as you can and be open-minded as you can. Right. And, you know, building an MVP is not, it doesn't cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. Like, you know, there's, you know, for this is for anybody who's looking to get into, um, to, to software. It's like offshore is your best friend. Upwork right. is your best friend, right? Like finding a good agency that can build an MVP for you at a low cost to, once you understand where there's a need at, you design that need again, work with a designer. It's going to cost you a couple thousand bucks. If that design makes sense, again, push that back, get feedback, if it makes sense, develop it. Um, but again, everyone, there's so there's I talk to so many people who feel they need to build this giant, giant thing. Right. Bonzo started out. I mean, obviously, no, you, you use Bonzo. Bonzo started out with one thing: automation campaigns. Mm -hmm. That's it. No right. integrations, like nothing. There were no conversations. There was not pipe, nothing. It was literally email, text, voicemail. <laughs> and that was it. That was the entire Bonzo. And so this was in 2018, late 2002. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, early, early 2019. That's all it was. And this is where it gets exciting, right? Because you have, you fill a need mm -hmm. with simplicity, right? You deploy that and you get feedback from your users. Right. And that's where I think, like Netflix has a really good story about this, right? Because like their whole mentality is build it in the, in the air. And that's really mm -hmm. ours as well. And same thing with life and product. Like Bonzo is always in beta. I look at life. Life yeah. is always in beta. We're still <laughs> always evolving and learning. I'm, there is no end point. Oh, that's always, great. always, yeah. And so, like with Bonzo, it's always in beta. Like there is no end product of Bonzo. Right. And I think that's the way that we should look at if there is a mm. product that you're pushing out to either consumers or businesses. It's their feedback. That's your beta. 
Right. Those are your beta testers. And always listening to them and their feedback because they're the ones who are living it every single day. And wow. so we, we we pushed Bonzo Light MVP out and then we just listened. Yeah, that's, it. that's great, I mean, dude. I think, you. I mean, there's a filter there that you have to have because there's some like ironic, you know, like just silly ideas that that people say. Right. And also <laughs> like we, we made the big mistake too, Noah, of we were trying to find market fit early on. So we were taking on any clients. We're taking on financial planners, insurance okay. agents, title reps, mortgage, real estate. And we realized, you know, it's like, it's looking at the data and looking at the nuances of like, okay, who churns the most? Uh, who has the most red tape? Who's got, you know, the most, you know, like, so like financial planners are all over the place. Uh, realtors churn a lot. Um you know, um, uh, who else did we have? Insurance agents want all mm -hmm. of this. They have nuances of their business that they want built in. Otherwise, the product's not going to work. Right. So we, we started like, you know, just, you know, what, who doesn't work great? Who are we going to build it for? Okay, loan officer. We know the business. It works really well. Because by the way, too, Bonzo was originally built for real estate agents. Mm -hmm. And we shifted that because we saw so much of a need in the mortgage space. Yes. And again, we didn't know that going in, right? So right. it's listening, listening to your clients. Yes. And Customers saying, okay, great. There's actually a fit here. There's a, and what does that look like after this? I remember working in, uh, when I was a loan officer, I was part of a, um, a beta group from a big giant tech company that's still around today, but they were very early on. And I was curious because they would fly into Columbus, Ohio, where I'm at from Silicon Valley, and they would bring their, their entire product team when they were still just coming you know, into fruition as a company, but they would bring their entire product team and they would sit down at our table and they would just ask us questions, hmm. all their product team. And they would, and they'd get in the whiteboard session and they'd say, okay, like this or like this or like this. And we'd say, no, like this and this and this. And they were just jotting down notes nonstop, right. but they're listening. Like they're listening to the people that are in the industry and that's, and now that product today is a freaking monster. Like right. they just listen to their users and I love it. around the use case of their users. It's really yes. like that. I know it sounds like too like simple to be true, but that's really like that, that is, that is the playbook. Like listen to like get yeah. something out right. and get users on it and listen to them and develop that. Well, that's the funny part. Like as I've gotten deeper into just like entrepreneurship, the more and more that I have learned and the more that I like continue to kind of like refine of what I'm learning, it really seems like it's the fundamentals and the basics and like the things that seem simple that most people kind of gloss over. Cause the whole, like what you're touching on so much is like a lot of people are like, I have this great idea. I have this great idea. And then you never really take action. You never do anything. And to think that like, you're going to sit and like crank for six months and then unleash this great idea. And then all of a sudden right. be like, everyone's like, Oh, this is great. This is exactly what it's like. Doesn't you, work. It's not real. No, it never <laughs> yeah. works. That's not yeah. realistic. But like, if you launch, and then get feedback. And then your insights could never have come if you didn't take step one. But that is always the most uncomfortable one to do. But like three, four, five, six steps, like will come a little bit easier if you just do the first kind of like couple reps with it. And so like, yeah. that's really all it ever comes down to. It's just that first kind of uncomfortability of like, okay, I'm going to start, I'm going to test, I'm going to experiment. I'm going to allow this to be sort of a never ending work in progress, which I love that, that sentiment and idea of like, we're all sort of in beta mode and it's never, there is no end point or end goal. Like the work is the goal. What we're doing right now is the goal. Like it's just continuous. I, I think that's so powerful. That's really, really great. Yeah, that's it. I mean, I think that again, I've seen so many entrepreneurs is that they've got one customer or three customers and then they feel like they need to go raise money because they've got three mm -hmm. customers. Well, you don't have market fit. You don't have data. Like get an easier product, give it away if you need to. Yeah. Like that's, I mean, like that's, that's your most powerful use case is that, I mean, we were just giving it away because we just wanted feedback. Like here's yeah, the product, course. give me your feedback. Right. We knew like that we knew the end goal was much, was a longer road. And if you have belief in what you're solving for and you're a, you have that problem solver mindset, yep. you're going to get real life feedback and you're going to make that product better because you're just on this golden road right now yeah that's gonna that's gonna turn into something bigger than you realize at that moment and it's just staying on that path and, when, yes. and if you can stay on that path man it's it's very rewarding for right. not not financially just like in yourself like that yeah. is so rewarding that you stuck to something you had self-belief because today in this society where there is so there's so much lack of self-belief mm. and that's very unfortunate because i think there's a lot of external factors that influence 
who we are, but who we're supposed to be or how society is supposed to view us, like block yep. that shit out and just yep. be you build something awesome right. and use that feedback of, of natural use cases to build a great product. Yes. And like that, man, that sentiment is really powerful too. Like the same sort of like my, I guess I, you know, there's reasons why I feel like I've been able to not base a lot of my actions depending on like what I think other people think that I should do or because I'm trying to like please other people like me leaving my baseball career was like probably the first real big of like okay I'm stepping into like who I am and then beyond yeah. that it was just like all right nobody has ever understood what I do for work people still don't and like I'm you know six seven years into this and they still ask me like so what like what exactly is your business and I'm like yeah. I don't I don't need anybody to understand I don't expect you to understand and that's okay because I'm yeah. doing it for me and my own reasons but I want to go back to what you said too about like so I recently did that um, with, you, you, I mean, I'm sure you know the name Perry Marshall. Yeah. Of course. So yeah. I recently had the the true honor to do a coaching program, like co-host a program with him. He launched a new program called Zero to 100K. So it's like basically helping people go from like that, you know, I either am working a full-time job or I want to step into entrepreneurship. And like his whole idea is like that first kind of branch of Zero to 100K is like the most difficult because there's just, mm. there's not only like I need to figure out what I'm going to do for my business, but there's a lot of personal self-limiting beliefs that stand in the way of like, of well, what about this? And what about like, there's just so much personal, you know, he calls it head trash that like you got to clear yeah. out. But uh, one of his big sentiments is like, when you're selling your product or you're selling a service either is like being able to read a, a page in, in your client's journal or diary, like knowing exactly what it is that they're thinking about and solving for every single day, the things that they probably wouldn't even tell anybody and if you can read a page in their journal, like you can essentially have that conversation. You can sell them. You can solve their problems. Like, yeah, I think that's it. Like that's yeah. it right there. It is. And yeah, I think like, you know, for, um, you know, when, when we look even our, our, our sales team, right. There's, there's, there's an approach to connection that, mm. and, and let's just take a look at like, let's say you've got a service product, whatever the case may be. There's. There's a lot of like sales gurus out there on social who are just like, you know, they have the pre-qualifying questions. Are yeah. you the decision maker and this and that? People can sniff that shit out. Like right. if I get on a call and they're, they ask me that question, I'm out. Like I know so that informal. I'm just, yeah, it's, it's cool. very informal. And to your point, it's like pulling a page from their diary. You're now, it's really about addressing them. Yeah as if you're part of their team. And right. again, you're that problem solver mentality yes. coming in. It's like, how can I help you? But it's also finding connection and ident like thinking what running parallel with their thoughts, right? Mm -hmm. So our sales team is is never sells. It's right. It's 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 nudging like it's like subconsciously sure, but they are understanding where their business is. Uh, asking the right questions around their business yep. is where they want to go. Like, what is their current tech stack? What are their, like, what are some issues that you're currently having? Great. Now I can position how I'm going to show you the product pending on what your, where your business is today, what you're looking to solve for mm -hmm. all that BS around, like, are you the decision maker and you know, what's your budget and this and that it's like, th there is, there is not, there is no connection there. Yep. And when we look at like selling our services or product, it's at the end of the day, it's the same philosophy that we have at Bonzo. It's connection. If we mm. can drive connection with whoever we're talking to, like we have this philosophy, you've probably heard me say this, but Bonzo is a conversation forward CRM. So conversations create relationships, relationships create trust. And the byproduct of trust is more sales. That's going to come naturally. Yes. The best form of sales and marketing is caring. So if I can care at scale, I'm going to win more opportunities. Uh -huh. Yep. Right. So yep. if I'm going, coming into an opportunity, knowing that I'm genuinely there to help them and care for them and understand their pain points naturally, organically, you know, I'm going to have a better shot, shot at that opportunity to have Man. them be a client. Right. And that, is a transfer of energy essentially is like what that really comes down to is like yeah. them on the other side of it feeling like this person isn't necessarily just reading off a script, but like they're taking the time to, to yeah, listen, listen carefully. It. Yeah. Understand like what my problems are. And then one of my mentors uh, recommended this book to me called, uh, I forget what it's, it's like um, new, uh, man, I wish I remember what this book was called. It's something like finding like a win-win essentially like in a relationship. It's just like understanding where they're at. It's like negotiating that selling because sales like for me has never been, my strong suit, like I'm, I, I don't want to 
put that belief over myself. Like I'm being, I'm trying to be more aware of my words, but like I'm an operator, like I'm a fulfilled, like that is really yeah. what I, what I, you know, what my strong suit is. And so working on that type of language and just positioning and like explaining it to somebody of like, I want to be able to solve those problems is obviously really valuable too. So you said like when you guys first launched Bonzo, like it was just the automated campaigns. And like, I want to talk about like specifically the platform now, like what you guys are solving for, like what's the vision behind it? Where, like, what's the journey been like of just like onboarding new clients? Like, how did you guys grow your initial kind of subscriber base? Was it like networking and getting out to like trade shows and being in front of people? Like, was it strategic partnerships? Like, what was that kind of growth for you guys? You know, what'd that look like? Yeah, it was, uh, you know, it's been... Uh, uh, it's it's been an interesting journey on on the growth side of things because yeah. you know um you know 2020 in the mortgage industry it was like raining cash for loan officers they didn't right. need any technology tools <laughs> right. um you could raise your hand and you can get along <laughs> um but you know as as the market changed and interest rates adjusted you know loan officers were looking for opportunity and and we looked at like we never, we've never spent a lot of money in marketing. Um, mm -hmm. We have a philosophy at Bonzo is that like, let the product do the speaking and word of mouth do the speaking organically. Now, I don't that's know great. if that's good or bad, but it's, it's been a good position for us so far yep. because again, we want, you know, the, I always say like the best testimony you can give or the best sales you can give is not from yourself telling you how great the product is, but somebody right. else, right? Somebody else. So if I can create that energy um, or that ecosystem, then organically the cell itself is going to become much easier. Oh, right. I heard from my coach that I need to get Bonzo. So I'm here to just sign up and show me the platform. Like that's yeah. the perfect, yeah. that's the perfect <laughs> uh, demo to do. Yeah. Um, but you know, for us, it was, I mean, you know, you got to deal with a lot of things, right? Like you got to deal with product evolution, yep. um, building fast enough, but still, you know, there's compliance and regulation and server size and all that mm. kind of stuff you have to, you have to think about. Um, then you have to think about what partnerships are most advantageous. Like, so we got into, you know, the broker community and mm -hmm. that like, thankfully with like, people like Scott Shang and influencers in that space, um, creating those relationships and friendships, um, and, and allowing them to see how Bonzo can work in their business. Like that was so awesome for us. Yeah. Right. And right. that, that like, there's a girl, um, uh, her name's Karis and she works for, um, one of the, the AIM association, which yep. is association for brokers. Um, and she has been like, she got us into that community. And again, like it's, it's about knowing, you know, like networking events, like getting to know people, like, like again, building that, those, those friendships with those people. Um, but that certainly helped too. It's like getting into those ecosystems of your niche vertical. That's mm. so, so helpful. Like that, that can, that is better than, you know, having a hundred thousand dollar a month marketing budget for social advertising is getting into those niche groups, coaching groups, opportunities. That's really good for us. Yeah. But then you got to think about scaling. Like we didn't, <laughs> one thing that we didn't anticipate was, growth um hmm. heavy growth so yeah. like we were like yeah we've got a team we've got a great dev team we've got good security we've got support but then in 12 months we grew by 400 percent. like we were not dude ready. yeah we were man so, awesome so it was like one of those great. things like, okay now our biggest challenge is <laughs> like growing like right. we've got to now hire interesting we problem were, to solve for yeah yeah it was it was and, and same same as as much stress like you're like yeah. okay like like now, like product integrity was so important to us, like Miles and I, that like now we're like, shoot, like we don't want to ruin the integrity of the product because we can't onboard or support the growth, right? right. So then you have a new problem. So wow. it's always going to be, that's what I say, a problem solver, right? It's because mm -hmm. you're always going to, <laughs> like it's never going to be smooth sailing. It's right. always going to be a problem. Problems from scalability to server side, to DevOps, to compliance, to, uh, you know, like more onboarding, more support, more feature functionality, enterprise solution, like all those things all come into play. There's always something you got to think about. But at the end of the day, it's having the mindset. I know it sounds cliche because like it is, but having the mindset to know like where you prioritize your time, where you prior prioritize your energy. And again, I know this, like as you build your business, like there is no secret serum. It's mm -hmm. your people, like the people internally mm -hmm. on your business. Those are the most, like when you're starting to hire people, it's getting the right people. I mean, yeah. th that is, it's not miles and Jason. It's the team. Like yes. that, that's, that's the growth. Right. Um, and so, you know, getting, getting good people on your team is, is critical. Um, to answer your other question, just about, you know, like where, where is Bonzo going and, and yeah. you know, what the roadmap is, you know, it, it really is, 
the same mentality. We're listening to to our our user base. We now have, you know, um, eight thousand people on the platform, and a good Dude. chunk of those people are giving us awesome feedback on a daily basis. We've got it. you know operational excellence teed up to to support that feedback and. Um, back to my original statement about our, the product always being in beta, like that's where, you know, technology goes to die if you're not innovating. Mm -hmm. And so things like chat GPT and paying attention to that's like, you know, there's a lot of companies that react very quickly to that. And there is a time and place to react, um, thoughtfully and see how it works in your business model. Um, so it's like, again, it's like, okay, there's this new product. It's changed. It's flipping up the industry. How do we use chat GPT inside of Bonzo? What's yeah. the you know, what is the right way to do it where it's going to make a splash? Right. Man. Again, so much of what you just said, like I have just so much like connection with, and I think there's why there's probably like so much symbiosis between like us and our teams getting to work yeah. together. Cause like, yeah, same sort of deal, man. Like I, my, my entire business has always just been built off of referrals. Like I do something good for somebody and they tell somebody else. And like my sales calls for bonds are essentially like, Hey, so-and-so told me to talk to you about doing a bond to build out. Like yeah, here are yeah. my problems. And I'm like, cool. <laughs> like that's just the, it's the smoothest like conversation for me. And it's exactly what it is. And so again, like I'm, I'm so on board with that. And like the, so yeah, my question is always like for you as like, you know, founder being like high level, like my curiosity is always around, like, how do you keep your finger on the pulse of like what's happening in the specific mortgage industry so that you can continue to solve problems for your clients, but also like, staying on top of fulfilling like you know meeting client expectations and solving those problems like how like how do you split like what are you spending your time on how do you split your time like what is that and i know like something the other thing that before i let you answer that is like i the the term scale is really interesting i think in business and entrepreneurship people throw mm -hmm. it around and they kind of they had the wrong ideas like okay now it's time to scale and i think you guys were interesting and what i align with is like scale comes from like you mastered your product and there is demand in the marketplace and you are being forced to grow because yeah. your customers and your clients want you to grow. Like you yeah. have, and that's like a really good feeling. It's a good sign. And so like, yeah, I mean, the the two big things that I've always heard of like what can ruin your business is like hiring the wrong team members and taking on the wrong clients. Like yeah. those two things can wreck you. And so, yeah, I'm just curious to know, like for you being like, you know, high in the sky, being like the president and owning this, like how are you keeping your finger on the pulse of like being able to meet client expectations and solve their problems, but also like do the right thing for Bonzo strategically, like as an asset almost? Yeah. I mean, everything is a risk, right? There is, a, I'm not a fortune teller and, and, and nobody, no founder or business owner is a fortune teller. It's really yeah. about having your finger on the pulse and listening to the right people. So, wow. you know, when we look at our members or strategic partners, it's okay. Like, let me know your pain points. What are you looking to do? And that's for my job. Like I'm, a, I'm, I'll always be like a bulldog in it. Like I, I take, you know, I'll, I'll get on support calls. I'll get on sales yeah. calls, whether it's a mom <laughs> and pop shop or yeah. <laughs> like, I, I love it. Like I love, cause I, I want to learn, like, you've got to be obsessed with your customer base. That's if you've got a product or a service, you've got to be obsessed with your customer base. Yeah. Even if you grow and you've got a hundred, 200, 300 employees, you have to be obsessed with your customer base as, as the founder or owner of that business. Mm. As soon as you step back, then that's when it starts to get loosey. Right. And so for me, it's like, I, you know, I, I want my finger on the pulse, what's happening in the industry. I'm listening to the people who have their finger on the pulse in the industry. I'm listening to the users in the system like you mm -hmm. and others who are, who are power users of Bonzo. And also I'm listening to the people who are new, like who are just brand mm -hmm. new to technology. And it's like, I, you know, if they're throwing their hands up saying, I don't know where to start. Like that's, that's a big friction point for me. Yeah, right? right. So it's, it's the cross the bandwidth, but if you have your finger on the vertical that you serve and your clients that you serve as the business business owner, like you are the one that's driving the ship. So you've got to have your finger on that wow. pulse at all times. Your team members rely on your ability to make the decisions of the product right or wrong. And we've made a lot of wrong decisions of as a product, but we took chances and that's okay. Like right. your failure is going to happen. We failed a lot as a product. We we rolled out features that were not right for our use or for our user base. That's going to be a learning environment. Wow. And again, we take all, if we're learning from it, that's great. If we take too many failures, that's a bad thing, right? Yeah. So it's a, it's a hedge. You got to hedge your bets on what you're building as a product or what you're doing from a service perspective, you know, but you got to, and again, it's okay. You're going to fail. And that's the biggest thing. But if you've got your finger on the pulse, what's happening and a finger on the pulse with your clients, 
you're going to have, you're going to make some good moves and you're going to make some good moves for, for your people and, and your product and your business. Dude, it's really interesting. Cause like f- almost from like a entrepreneur perspective, people have the idea of like, I'm going to set this business up and like, it's going to run without me. And like, that's kind of their idea of starting a business or being yeah. entrepreneurs. Like I have this again, kind of false reality of like, I'm going to set this thing up and it's going to run. And like the CEO kind of lifestyles is like, you know, very overblown. And like, and I think people that like really win and you can define that however you want, like whatever success is, but like being obsessed and being like, this is the thing that I want to do with my time every day. Like that to me is a win. So like, I'm, I'm applauding that because I think that's just such a powerful message. And then the other thing about it is like being okay with like, not, how do I like you articulate? It's like, I, I'm okay with not necessarily knowing all the answers or figuring out as I go, which is super uncomfortable to do. But again, like that's essentially what you have to do. And you're right. Like that is risky and it requires change and it's uncomfortable, but it's always like, that's real growth. Like what I've always felt is interesting is like, I mean, we've all had our very, you know, anybody that's been in business for any, I know I'm, I'm still young in my career, but like, this is it. There's some uncomfortable times that come with entrepreneurship, but like, at least I feel alive. Like truly yeah. I'm living. Like that yeah. is something that I can hang my hat on every day. Man, it's fun, right? It's I mean, fun. like just going to work and going, I don't know exactly what's going to happen today, <laughs> but I know it's not going to be staring yeah. at my desk all day. Oh, and I think that that's cool for some people. Actually, that's yeah. cool for, like I was t- I was telling a, 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 one of my guys I, I mentor a little bit, his name's uh, uh, Colin. He's a great guy and starting a company and, um, and you know, he's he doesn't know what he has and this guy's got i mean the guy is he has obsession right he used to be a professional athlete he's got obsession the awesome. guy like he's got he's got obsessions like dude you've got the tools you've got the you've got the entire tool belt yeah you're gonna go out there you're gonna fail you know what failure looks like you you've lived it for a long time yes. it's gonna be part of the process like get familiar and comfortable with that it's like playing poker and you've got you know you've got um like two aces, right? And you know, you've got a pretty good chance. Someone Mm -hmm. else could have a better hand and you're going to win some of those hands. You're going to lose some of those hands, Mm -hmm. but you know, coming in like that finger on the pulse mentality, that finger on the pulse is your two aces. You're always going to have two aces. If you've got your finger on the pulse, what's happening Mm -hmm. and you know, you're listening and you're asking questions and you're obsessed with it. You've got two aces all the time. You're going to win some of those hands. (laughs) That's great, dude. (laughs) That's really, really cool. You seem like just, you know, like this is one of our first times ever getting to like super just like chat and talk. Like you like as a entrepreneur seem like so just like dialed in and like informed and like there's just so much like similarities of like the things that like I've studied and learned and like what you're, you just, you have it like so well dialed. It's something I really, really <laughs> admire about you, dude. Seriously. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. That's super That's cool. Super. Thank you. Where does that come from? Like, has it been... Other mentors, are like, are you a, are you a reader? Are you books? Like, what does that what does that look like for you? I think it's both. I think you know, I used to, I used to read a lot, and yeah. that's okay. Like, you you can um like once you get into your business, you're not, you're not gonna because I've got kids, like I've got a family, so there's like that dedication time, there's business dedication time for sure. And so um you know I used to read a lot, just ingesting as much information as I can. But like right. you know once you're in the same thing with like the reading the book or jumping into the water, right yeah. on swimming, yeah. same mentality. It's like when you're when you're in it. You're learning every single day. Every right. single day you're learning something new. You're getting better if you have that mindset, right? right. And most business owners do because they want to get better. So, you know, I think ingesting information, listening, always having a curious mindset, always having an open mindset about everything that happens in your business, the conversations that you have, the interactions that you have, the wins and the losses, digesting them. Why did it happen? Asking questions. You're never going to find a solution, but you are going to find an answer. Right. Mm. And so there's a, there's a difference there is that you will find a, um, a resolution or solution to something whether it's good or bad. It's not, it's not always going to be the right answer. And I love like, you know, podcasts are great and reading books are great and listening to thought, thought leaders like, you know, Seth Godin is one of my favorite authors of all time. Um, this is marketing and this and this, and I, I mean, I've done his workshops and I've learned a lot and it, but I will say the best learning environment that anybody can ever do is throwing themselves into the doghouse. Bingo. That's going to be your, that's going to be, that is going to be your PhD in yes. business and entrepreneurship. Yeah, dude. I love, again, love the sentiment. Cause like reading and like consuming just to consume is kind of overblown. Like I, mm-hmm. I mean, like, same sort of deal. Like I, I've always been a big reader of just a fascination of books. Um, I don't know what it is. Like I, and maybe it's the introvertedness or just love. I just, I've always yeah. loved to read, but like as business picks up, you just don't have as much time. You don't have as much kind of downtime to like 
but the like now it's sort of reading like with a end goal in mind of like I need I'm looking for this specific kind of thing and not just reading just to say like yeah I read three books this last month it's like right you didn't really do anything with it then what does that mean in the first place because like I've always felt it's been learning and curiosity that I've pursued and the businesses are like my vehicles and playgrounds to like test it in a real live environment with real live consequences that yeah that's it that's your it. business is your library yes oh and, you wow, know yes you know, like the, there's, there's really cool tools. Like, like Blinkist is one of my favorite yeah. apps where you can yep. digest a micro like totally. 10 minute read. And, and right. like, that's, that's awesome. Like, you know, yep. like I used to feel bad if I didn't like spend 30 or to 45 minutes a day reading a book or digesting yeah. knowledge, right. but your business is your knowledge. Like that's, that's where you're, you're gaining information every single day and it's totally. the best place to learn. Man, I think that's so powerful. Okay, I will leave it there. Dude, like I could talk to you for hours. Like this was so much fun. <laughs> Seriously, such a great time. Um, dude, thanks so much for having me. This was like, we flew dude, by an hour here. This was an uh, excellent conversation. That's how it goes, dude. That's seriously yeah. how it goes. I like, I, I guess one last question. Like what's from a, again, almost like a a business entrepreneur step, taking a step back from just like what Bonzo is solving for in the marketplace. Like seeing the... Bonzo as like a business vehicle is like an asset essentially to like build, you know, possible like equity, you know, or, uh, you know, actual value, like in the marketplace, like, is there a vision to like, we want this to be part of an acquisition one day? Like, are you guys going to expand into other vertical? Like what is kind of like the long-term vision of, of Bonzo? There's a lot of different way. And like the cool part is, is once you get into, you learn so much about other industries, right? Like I know so much about carrier regulation now. Like I, I yeah. know, I can go, <laughs> I could go start a carrier <laughs> tomorrow if I wanted to. Like, you know, like being able to, like, so I, I mean, funny. I deal with AT and T and T Mobile and Verizon, like all the, and you don't know, right? That's so like, funny, dude. so like now, so your possibilities, like to answer that question, like your opportunities are wide open, right? Like, wow, you're like man, yeah. like Bonzo could be a carrier. Bonzo could be this, like, right. but again, like. Right now, it's like you just like there is a time to to live in the moment and just get better with the product and listen and 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 just develop and uh, like organically, those other opportunities are going to come along. And if 100%. one makes sense, like I would never. Um, but it's not our cards, right? Because we're just having a really fun time solving problems and having fun and, and engaging with our members. Yeah, dude, that's so great. Again, it goes back to like not trying to solve problems before they exist and like making the most of your opportunity. Like, like what I used to always go back to is like, I can only do the most with the, the skills that I have, the amount of leverage that I have with the network that I have with like what is currently at my disposal. And if I continue to double down and do the most with those things, then I have to trust in that the rest of it is going to sort of take care of itself. And that, yes, like I'm looking down this tunnel and it's pretty gray. There's a, little, a faint little light at the end. But like, I'm going to meet some cool characters along the way and they're going to continue to make this this process and like along this tunnel what it's all about. And like getting there is not really what it's about in the first place. It's like, I'm just, I'm, there's a bit like, I I, I think more and more as I've gotten deeper into like Hermosi and he's gotten like more and more just pr like promoting more of his content. Like the person that's just is walking to walk, like, and that's just like work is the goal. And like, this is what it's all about. It's like, I'm not doing anything else other than like this, like, this is what I want to do every day. Exactly. And that is hard to compete with those people. It's really hard. And Hermosi actually said, I mean, the, the, the people side of it, he talks about that a lot. Like it's the growth of, of, of obviously like he's being, you know, um, a little bit, you know, um, nice about the whole thing, but like he said, like, you know, you listen to his success, it's the people, like it's yeah. the people you surround yourself with. It's 100%. the right people. It's the networking, it's your employees, it's the people you network with, it's your clients. Like those are the people that are going to move the needle. And when you see gray in that tunnel, mm. embrace it. Yes. Because that gray means that you're 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 in the moment and you're you're in the doghouse and you're getting <laughs> better. Light is a is good, but it's bad. Light means it's easy. That means it's done. <laughs> we never want to see the light. I want to see a little bit, I wanna, but I want to be living in the gray. Like, Dude, that's yes. where I want to live. Oh man, that is so great. Okay, I know I said I was going to leave it there, and we we I, I we need to have you back on because this was such a blast. If anybody is interested in getting onto the platform, how can they work with you guys? Where, where should they go to, to learn some more information? Yeah. Uh, getbonzo.com. Um, you can check out, uh, some of our, our videos and, 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 uh, you know, schedule a demo, but, uh, yeah, getbonzo.com.
Fantastic. Jason, seriously, what an honor. Thank you so much again for being on. I really, really appreciate it. Hey, thanks, Noah. This is a blast. Appreciate it, brother. All right. Anybody that was listening and watching, make sure you will leave us a like on YouTube. Leave us a review to all my builders out there. I salute you. And I will see you guys in the next episode.